recording, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Kazala to enable your testless or remote workforce. Um, a lot of staff is working from home at the moment, and even in some environments where staff is not able to actually work remotely, you might still want to keep in touch with them uh, using new ways. Um, common messaging platforms um, is a, a good option, but they typically have a few limitations. Um, firstly, communication um, that goes on to any retail um, messaging solution is not necessarily under your direct control and it's very difficult to apply any sorts of governance, uh, security or auditing to communication that takes place on those platforms. Um, and the second problem with uh, some of the common messaging platforms out there is that it's difficult to capture structured data. Uh, everything ends up being a conversation, either a one-on-one -on -one or group-based conversation, uh, which is great in most scenarios, but in some scenarios you might want to actually capture some structured um, uh, uh, information from your, from your end user. So Microsoft dev developed uh, Microsoft Kaizala uh, quite a while ago, and I think um, the solution has been um, underplayed um, uh, uh, to a, to a large extent. Um, and they created this platform specifically to address uh, these two issues that you have around um, using retail-based or consumer-based messaging platforms. Some of the benefits of Microsoft Kaizala is the fact that it is largely free. Um, there are some caveats around um, uh, free and, and, and when the paid-for version is required. Um, but a lot of the typical scenarios can, can be delivered and done through uh, the, three, the free version of uh, Microsoft Kaizala. Um, it does not rely on a corporate identity, so your staff identify themselves through a telephone number and you include them in your corporate communications through this telephone number, the cell phone number. Um, obviously a smartphone is required because it is a smartphone based app available for both Android and iOS. Um, so let me sh show you how this works. So I'm going to switch over to my phone. Right, I'm going to open up the Kaizala app here. So I've just downloaded the app. Um, so I've still got to complete my registration process. So in this case, it's requiring my name. Region and my telephone number. Right, and this is going to verify me by sending me a one time PIN over SMS. Great, so I can go and add my own profile picture here. This can also be controlled from the back end, so I'm going to skip that for now. and my client is ready. It's asking me for required permissions to access my contacts and send me notifications. Great, so there we go. So what you see in front of you should look um, fairly familiar. It's a typical one-to-one -one or group-based chat client, um, not very dissimilar from the likes of WhatsApp. Uh, or Skype or Facebook Messenger um, and I've got the ability to go and chat to any other Kaizala enabled client. Um, I've also uh, been added to a, a bunch of groups here that you can see in front of you uh, and some of those groups are groups that I might have created myself or some of those groups belong to my organization and you can identify those by the little Office 365 icon that you see next to the images of some of those groups. So in my scenario, I work for an organization called Shoppers Delight, and I've been added to the corporate group, um, which all employees of Shoppers Delight belongs to. So I can go in there, and I can go and communicate and chat with all of the rest of my colleagues um, in, a, in this group. And the kind of thing that you can post either to another user or a group is a message or you can attach an image, a video, you can send a contact card, you can attach a document, 
uh, you can send your current location, etc. So um, nothing really odd about uh, that capability. And this is uh, so. Let me show you where where Kaisala really comes into its own right. So if I click again on the little attachment um, icon down in the message window, I can see that there are some ways for me to submit structured data. So these actions or action cards as they refer to in Kaisala has been made available by my corporation and um, the availability of them uh, can be controlled to uh, uh, a certain audience or certain individuals or certain groups. Um, the membership of that group and the rights to that group can be controlled uh, by uh, my company. Um, and the data that's captured for each one of these action cards, again, is defined by my organization. So in my scenario, let's start off with a really simple example. I'm going to request my leave balance. So I'm going to select the first option there. So in this case, uh, a very simple questionnaire is presented to the user just to indicate if he is wanting a detailed or a summary leave balance. So I'm going to select a summary leave balance. Um, and in the back end, this action card has now been hooked up to my corporate systems. Um, it will extract my leave balance and through a conversation based response, which I should receive in a second or two, I can see what my leave balance are um, for today, which is um, 4.5 days annual leave, etc. So that's a very simple example of where I've captured structured data from the user. In this case, really just a request from him to to, to get his leave balance and I've responded through some integration via the back end of Kaisala into my uh, HR system, um, extracted that information and communicated it back to the user on his, on his phone. So let's do something a little bit more interesting. So um, in this scenario, I might actually be on site somewhere in my organization. I spot a problem, a, a non-conformance, or, or, or something that I uh, deem as a, as a risk to safety, and I can go and report this problem um, by taking the second action card there. So I'm gonna click on report the problem, and in this case, a more detailed questionnaire is presented to the user to submit. So in this case, he wants to know what the problem is. So I'm gonna say um, there's a leak in the, in the storeroom. It's asking me to categorize this um, problem. So in this case, I'm going to say this is potential risk to safety of staff. I can indicate where I've uh, uh, spotted this problem or this non-conformance. In this case, it was in the storage areas of the organization. And lastly, just to demonstrate um, how rich these forms can be, I can, for instance, ask the user to attach an image. So I'm just going to take a little random photo here of the floor. Add that to my response. It's next. There's a summary of my non-conformance that I'm reporting, and I'm going to submit that into the Skyzala group. A little bit more of an elaborate workflow is now uh, kicked off in the back end. Um, firstly, the system would thank the user for looking out for everybody's safety and indicate to them or indicate to the user that the problem has been submitted to the health and safety committee. Obviously that decision you can make in the back end depending on how the problem has been categorized by the user, where you would want to route this problem to. Um, now, in my scenario, I am also representing the Health and Safety Committee. So, I will in this case receive an email to indicate to me that a problem has been reported and I can go and look at this issue. So, this is a Microsoft Flow based workflow that's driving this process. And once I open this action, um, which now requires me to go and investigate this problem, this leak that's been reported, and then indicate if it's been rectified or not. open this action I 
can add some comments. So this guy's want to say. Leak was found and fixed. Sorry, Tyron, I'm going to do this over again. Right, so um, I'm going to open my email now. I'm representing the, um, the facilities department within Shoppers Delight. I've received this request from one of my staff members to indicate that they've uh, spotted a leak in the storage area. Um, and I'm going to now open this action to go and indicate the status of the of the task. So here I can see the detail of this request and I'm going to indicate that the leak has been found and fixed. And I'm going to come and I'm going to submit that. Great, so that will finish the process in the background. And as you can see on my phone, um, I have now received a message from my facilities manager to indicate that the problem that I've detected has been addressed. And when I open up my Kazala client, I can see that message in the group. Great, so um, Microsoft Kazala, a very quick uh, overview of how you can reach out to your deskless workforce using uh, the Microsoft Kazala smart, um, uh, smartphone app and a very quick demonstration on how you can enable the capturing of structured data uh, into your um, into your organization and, 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 and interact with that uh, staff member without um, the need of a uh, of an actual uh, laptop. So very briefly, I just want to end off by showing you the back end of Kaizala. Um, so this is the management interface. This is where you as an organization would define your groups and invite your staff members into these groups. Obviously, we could link up um, the, uh, the back end to some sort of database um, that will represent your, your staff members in order to, to bulk provision access for them to, to Kaizala. All of that is possible. Uh, if you do use Azure Active Directory, um, the out of the box capability is there to link Kaizala up to your current instance of Azure Active Directory. Um, the Kaizala client is also available as a web client, so in this case I can also use the web client. In this case I can log into the web client, a pin code is sent to my smartphone client which I'll enter and I would basically be presented with exactly the same functionality as I have on the smartphone app I can receive as, um, as a web client. Great, thanks for watching. Um, please reach out to First Digital if you have any questions around the deployment of Microsoft Kaizala in your organization.